Hi guys, uh, KP this side. Hope all of you are doing good. Uh, this is vlog number 53 in Decoding Equity Markets with KP series. Okay, what are we discussing today? A recap into the equity markets last week followed by my uh, take on the global scenario as of now as far as India, US and Chinese economies are concerned. A bit of Japan also we will discuss today followed by uh, how indices are placed right, right now and what uh, I personally suggest looking at the levels in uh, both Indian and US indices, a stock pick followed by a life hack. Okay, Chalo, let's start. So uh, last one week was quite buzzing uh, as far as especially the US markets are concerned for the fact that uh, Federal Reserve had to come up with its decision um, um, on rate hike, followed by uh, the speech of Jerome Powell, what he feels about the economy and what he feels about uh, the further hikes in interest rates, whether needed or not. So till Wednesday, the US markets were on a higher side. Like I told you so many times in my past videos in the last couple of months that uh, Dow Jones will be testing the levels of 36, 300, 36, 5, uh, sorry, 35, 300, 35, 500, which they have done this week. And uh, now uh, the next uh, up move, which I see in uh, Dow Jones will be in the range of 36,000. They will be soon touching 36,000 is what I feel. This is uh, what I can anticipate from the times the Dow Jones was able to cross the levels of 34,200. If you remember, I told you, after 34,200, the very next zone will be 35,300 to 35,500. And once they go past that level comfortably, they did manage to go above 35,500, but the closing on Friday has come below that levels. Okay, so uh, till Wednesday, the US markets were up. Thursday, it went down for some reason, which I will discuss later in this video. And Friday, again, they have given a st very strong closing they have given on Friday, not just Dow Jones, but also NASDAQ. Now, what is the reason for that? That again, I have to discuss with you. Okay, so we start with the US uh, uh, economy. The first thing, US Federal Reserve has increased the rates by 0.25%. This is not a breaking news for us because I've been telling that to you for last one and a half months that US Federal Reserve in July, on 26th of July to be more precise, probably will go for a 0.25% rate hike. That is not going to surprise the markets, will be taken in a positive spirit because what's what can be a breaking news is if they don't go for a rate hike or if, if they go for a rate hike of 0.5%. But 0.25% was always factored into the market. We were all anticipating that the most of the polls which were done from the economist, everybody part anticipated a 0.25%, that is 25 basis points rate hike. That said and done, Jerome Powell came, he spoke, he's saying they want to see how the economy behaves from here. Uh, inflation looks under control, but not at its optimal levels. Uh, if by September, the next meeting on rate um, uh, hike or not will be in the month of September and they want to see uh, how the uh, economy goes from here because Jerome Powell made it very clear that US economy looks very resilient at this point of time. If the labor market does not cool off and if the consumer spending does not moderate over the next two months, they may have to go for another rate hike. This is what he said. Now, Right now, the U.S. Um, uh, interest rates the, um, are in the range of 5.25% to 5.5%. The second good news for U.S. Uh, uh, economy was the fact that for the second quarter, that is the April to June quarter, their GDP numbers have been 2.4%, which were anticipated would be somewhere close to 1.8%. Now see, in the December quarter, they registered 2.6% growth in GDP, December, okay? Then in the March quarter, it went up to 2% and now from 2% it has gone to 2.4%. Now theoretically what we say is if for continuously two quarters, the GDP starts shrinking, the growth in GDP starts shrinking, it gives you a hint that economy might have started its journey in the recessionary phase. But once again, the US... Um, uh, economy has defied it. They have defied the law. They have defied the theory. 
and when they were anticipating from 2.6 it came down to 2.4% uh, sorry 2% and they anticipated this time it will be somewhere close to 1.8% the gdp growth rate but instead of going down to 1.8% it went up to 2.4% which means this again goes on to show that us economy is doing very good very good on all fronts be it the consumer spending be it the labor market be it the profits of the corporate houses be it the industrial activity everything looks good i don't know what exactly is the problem over here because you will see a lot of people are uh, you know uh, disheartened about the fact that economy is not going into recession now why do you want to push your economy into recession because the because the price which you pay for coming out of recession probably for me is much higher than the price you pay to normalize your inflation if you don't understand that you means i'm talking about the us uh, federal reserve if they don't understand that they should look at china how much china is struggling right now just to come out of the slow demand and disinflationary environment in their economy the stimulus packages are not working the government policies are not working any kind of rate cuts liberalizations is not working for them right now so i really don't understand why is this that the uh, the, the federal reserve is hell bent on throwing and pushing economy into recession which is not needed normalizing inflation okay instead of 3 months it takes 6 months instead of 6 months it takes 1 year that's fine but when your rates are at 5.25 to 5.5% if still your economy is doing good you should rather do an introspection why you needed to have 0.25% rates for such a sustainable period of time okay we had covid but all done and dusted covid is over you wanted to give stimulus you did that you cut down on the rates you have been maintaining a low rates for so long now so long so probably you should have started raising your rates much earlier because even with the rates in the in the brackets of 5 to 5.5% your economy is showing a lot of resilience your economy is still doing wonders then why the need was there to have interest rates in the range of 0.25% to 0.5% for so many years think about it so gdp numbers have been super for us markets they are uh, showing a lot of good recovery uh, even with the rates being so high in fact you won't believe me the, on this we have been shouting since last two months that us equity markets are going to go up which will also in return pull up the indian equity markets didn't i say all this to you i've said this loud and clear in every single video of mine every single video and now dow was up for 13 consecutive days guys 13 consecutive days it has closed in green this was till wednesday on 13 consecutive days us equity markets that is the dow jones closing in green last happened in 1987 which means after 36 years we witnessed something very similar and i feel so good that we were able to predict that so good i feel about it intel the chip maker now what is the reason for dow jones to go up is it all about rates no just listen to me intel the chip maker uh, from us has reported higher than projected revenue procter and gamble both sales and earnings were better than estimate i told you in my last video microsoft uh, alphabet meta are going to come up with their numbers all have given stupendous numbers most of their earnings have been better than estimates most of their revenues have been better than projections so when your companies are doing good the reason why nasdaq closed so good on friday that is yes uh, that is day before yesterday is one one again the once again the reason for the same is that companies like microsoft uh, alphabet have done very good numbers and uh, if you if you ask me overall uh, as far as the us economy is concerned i personally don't see any reasons why us equity markets will stop performing from here on yes with every upside that happens this uh, this upside which happened for 13 odd days continuously in dow jones taking it from those 34 200 levels to 35 300 35 500 levels uh the it clearly shows that the companies have been performing really good the numbers have been coming better than estimates and probably if you ask me i personally don't see any reason for dow jones to you know uh correct from here drastically so small corrections are always good like i always say it's healthy for the markets if you consolidate uh, if the markets consolidate in a particular zone and then they 
uh, you know once they have consolidated their position and then they move to their next lap that is always good but as far as uh, you know uh, sizable correction is concerned that is not coming any anytime soon what about china uh, problems are still there uh, they they are uh, uh, they are trying their level best to fight out uh, the disinflationary environment but things don't seem to be working out at this point of time if you see the global uh, numbers being reported by companies which are multinational companies which are directly or indirectly associated with china they have also started reporting a slowdown as far as uh, china is concerned so their their products demands have gone down in a, a directly or indirectly and some of the companies have come up and told that china economy is not recovering at the pace probably they would have wanted it to so companies like procter and gamble intel l'oreal coca cola mastercard and the list goes on most of these companies in their results commentary they have said that because of the slowdown in china uh, some of their uh, uh, revenues have been hit because of that and this, they don't see a recovery coming in very soon in this particular direction other than that globally they are saying things are looking okay but as far as china's economy is concerned they are um, exp they are of a, uh, a view point that there may be the slowdown continuation for some more time the second quarter gdp for china grew by 6.3% year on year whereas the market expectation was 7.3% which means the gdp growth for china in the second quarter was again a little disappointing the ruling uh, chinese communist party uh, target uh, growth target was at 5% for 2023 on an average that is from the ruling uh, communist party whereas the average uh, gdp for past 40 years in china has been in the range of 8.5 to 9% so it clearly shows that they are, they have almost uh, gone for half the expectations as per as far as their gdp numbers are concerned and this comes from the ruling party Okay, the Monday, last Monday, the ruling party had formed a decision-making committee of 24 members, Politburo, something they call it like, Politburo, and there was a there was a serious levels of discussion being done on how they can boost the consumption, how they can boost the tourism, employment, uh, the numbers have to be better, and how they can help, uh, you know, uh, uh, bring some fire in the real estate uh, uh, in China which I told you the Chinese real estate is one big contributor to their economy <clears throat> and right now the real estate uh, in China is uh, witnessing slowdown. This meeting, uh, uh, some uh, economists sort of believe that this me meeting was uh, you know productive while some other feel that some of the key uh, points have missed out in this particular meeting but post this meeting the on Tuesday and Wednesday, the Hang Seng from Hong Kong uh, was up by 3% and China CSI 300 index was also up by 2%. So a uh, lot of investors have, you know, started putting back money into Chinese economy uh, in anticipation that uh, this meeting probably was very productive and things will start changing from here because government and the Communist Party have um, agreed upon this to work together to promote private companies right till now we all know this that chinese economy uh, is something which always keeps the government's uh, you know uh, interest on top but now they have told this very clearly that they want the private uh, sector to grow they want to encourage them to do businesses there will be uh, ease of doing businesses uh, the policies will be made more liberal as far as private participants are concerned Otherwise, earlier it was only state-owned, 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 but now they will be focusing more on private businesses. They will be, uh, uh, the startups will be given a lot of encouragement in some form of subsidies or lower interest rates, some benefits will be given to them. So, a lot of you keep asking me, uh, if out of India I have to put my money, which countries do you suggest or like is US the good markets? US, US is a good market always. Uh, you have to be very specific with what companies you want to go for. But at this point of time, once again, because you know I like taking, uh, you know, uh, uh, contrarian view. So my personal suggestion is that at this point of time, if 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 by some means you can put money in Chinese uh, stock markets, that will be good. But then uh, easier said than done. 
uh, you need to have uh, done a lot of groundwork before you do that because we don't know much about their company. So you have to do a lot of research about it. If you ask me personally that, sir, can you suggest? Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm still struggling with Indian equity markets. So for me, it's a daydream. I can't, I can't suggest you anything in Chinese markets, but I can suggest you one thing for sure that this is the right time when people can park in some funds in Chinese economy purely based on contrarian view because somewhere Chinese economy has to recover. One good thing which I feel about Chinese economy is the fact that government is taking all this slowdown and everything seriously and they are trying their level best to bring the economy out of it. They are doing that. They are doing their bit. Okay, where are we placed as far as India is concerned? Good, good news for us. SBI economist have come up with a prediction that Indian GDP will grow at 6.5% in FY24. That number is decent. Given the struggles which are going on globally, India growing at 65 to 7% is good. They also say by 2028, latest by 2029, India will become the third largest economy uh, in the globe. Right now we are ranked at fifth, but we feel that we may touch the position in among the top three. This is what SBI economists believe. IMF have come up with the growth, growth projections. Their global growth projections in 2023 and 24 are placed at 3%, whereas from 3.5% earlier, which they did for 2022. But for India, they are predicting a growth rate of 6.1% in 2023. 6.1%, 23, 24 period they are anticipating. India will grow almost at double the speed at which the global markets will grow. Isn't it a thumbs up for us? It is. So trust the economy. Trust the Indian uh, businesses. In 2023, first half, foreign portfolio investors have put in rupees 1 lakh crores in India directly through exchange. Directly. FBI have put in 1 lakh crore in the first half of 2023 directly through exchanges. This is highest in a decade. In last 10 years, this has been the highest numbers for first six months. All this when markets are at all time high. All this when a lot of people are telling you to shy away from market. All this when a lot of people are telling you to book your profits and leave the market for the time being and look for some other asset classes. And only when KP is coming and telling you to keep it, your money invested in markets and just exercise a little bit of caution. But overall, I, if you ask me, I, um, I have always told you that Indian markets are going to outperform. Yes. With every time the market is going up, you got to exercise more caution. That is for sure. But overall, if you see, we are looking in a very healthy state at this point of time. Okay. Companies like LNT, Tata Motors, Bajaj Auto, Bajaj FinServe, Bajaj Finance, all have Asian paints, all have given stupendous numbers for the uh, April to June quarter. That is the first uh, quarter of this year, this financial year. Yes, for uh, Tech Mahindra, Tata Steel numbers were not so good, Vedanta numbers were not so good, but then we know the uh, the IT sector and metal sector has been struggling to uh, some extent, again, not because of inherent problems with them, but because of the global crisis. And if Chinese economy uh, slowdown continues, guys, then commodity will be one uh, sector which will be penalized you can see um, a fall in demand for com commodities like the especially the metal sector then your uh, cement stocks may see some slowdown again and uh, but that depends on how serious the problems will be in china but the kind of efforts they are taking the you know the the local governments uh, tying up with the central government all those things being done the meetings being done high priority meetings being done a lot of decisions being taken uh, and framing of policies being done, which is so unlike China, everything is uh, um, uh, going in the right direction. And we feel that maybe things will improve from here. Okay. So, yes, I was about to tell you something about Japan. Thursday, what caused US markets not to close in green for the consecutive 14th day? Uh, unreasonable. Uh, you, now, we know that Japan follows a negative interest rate uh, strategy, which is that right now the, the interest rates in Japan are minus 0.1%. Japan has seen very high growth for many number of years. That is the reason why they are the third largest economy in the globe at this point of time, even now. But for last many years, J Japan has seen a slowdown. There has been a slowdown in consumption. There has been a slowdown in, in industrial production. Their, their imports and exports have been uh, uh, impacted. 
So what Japanese government decided to do was to cut down on interest rates, in fact, go for a negative interest rate. Now, what do we mean by negative interest rate is that if they have a negative interest rate of minus 0.1%, it is when banks want to keep their money with the Bank of Japan, that is the Federal Reserve over there. And if banks have to keep their money with the Federal Reserve, then they will have to pay interest on keeping that money. So indirectly, what government is, uh, um, what government or the uh, Federal Reserve is telling them is to give the money to public, give the money to corporates, give the money to industrial participants. Even if they have to do that at lower interest rates, do that. But they are indirectly encouraging them to disperse that money in the economy. Because only when money is available in the economy, there is liquidity in the economy, that is when industrial activity will boom. That is when economy will revive. That is when you will come out of a disinflationary environment. They are not exactly into a disinflationary environment, but they keep their control, keep the control on their interest rates because they want economy to grow at a faster pace, which they experienced for decades. If you go back five to seven years, they for consistent, consistently for decades, they have given very good numbers. But now that there is a slowdown. Now Thursday, a news came speculating that maybe now Japanese um, BOJ, that is Bank of Japan, will decide to go for hike in interest rates. Now, why, why that comes as a unpleasant surprise to the markets is that if they increase the interest rates, then that ease of uh, getting funding in uh, Japan, that will reduce. And to some extent, money flowing from Japan to other economies will also face a slowdown. Keeping all these things in mind, the US equity markets reacted first. But on Friday, the Bank of Japan uh, uh, governor has come and he said that, no, we are not changing the rates right now and we will continue with the minus 0.1% rate. And then again, Friday, the markets in US celebrated. We are due to celebrate. Probably on Monday, we may see some upside in the Indian equity markets. If no further drama happens in this um, uh, today evening or tomorrow morning, then we, see, we might see uh, um, equity markets in India also going up a little bit okay how are we placed on the indices uh, dow jones gave a good closing at around 35460 nasdaq gave a good closing about 14316 all said and done all explained to you i have told you they will consolidate in that zone how long i don't know but we are very quickly moving towards the range of 36000 in dow jones hitting a 52 week high this is what i can see Indian Nifty is at 19,646. Yes, we almost touched 20,000 mark, but we could not sustain those levels. 19,991, I think, is the levels where we went. And from there, we started falling down. We are falling, we are consolidating, we are falling, we are consolidating. But I feel that is good, actually, guys, because you don't want that one-sided uh, buttery upside in the markets because the buttery upside in the markets is always dangerous. We want the markets to go healthy. Is there anything to worry about right now? No, there's nothing to worry about till the time we are above 19,500 levels. There's nothing to worry. Even if we drop below 19,500, I personally don't feel there is anything to worry. But if you ask me about the levels from 19,500, probably we will then, uh, you know, start looking at the next big support coming in, coming in at around 19,200 level is what I feel. Bank Nifty looks strong at 45,500, but like I always tell you, I personally feel the banking has overdone here. Banking has overdone. Okay, I'm not saying the results have been bad or something. Results have been stupendous for most of the banking stocks, but I personally feel we have overdone in banking sector. And I will still stick to the same two stocks as far as banking sector is concerned. My first pick will be HDFC Bank and the second pick will be Kotak Bank. I'm very, very bullish on these two stocks. If you seriously want to diversify your portfolio and have something from banking sector, probably you go for these two stocks okay my pick again a contrarian one because of uh, the uh, problems going on in china and uh, economy slowed on globally chemical sector stocks are being penalized again and you know chemical sector is one of my favorite uh, i personally have given deepak nitrate to you on a couple of occasions and it has done well upl was also recommended by me in one of my vlogs but it's struggling at this point of time but for somebody who is who is, who is having a lot of patience and can do some value investing. UPL is almost giving you those levels in the range of 620 to 625. Eyes closed. Go for UPL, guys. It is a stock which will never disappoint you. It may take time. The numbers are good always. The, num the guidance is good. This quarter, chemical sector stocks have not given good numbers. So this, this, this time you might see 
numbers being disappointing a little bit but that is what exactly we want some quarters if they don't post good numbers the prices go down for the shares and that is when they create opportunities for us so upl is one stock which you can still have in your radar but that is not my pick for today that uh, that is a follow up on on my last video right now my pick is srf again another stock from chemical sector i personally love this stock and uh, right now trading at around 2170 with a 52 week low of 2040 so almost very close to its 52 week low 52 week high being 2865 right now trading at around a discount of 25 percent the results were declared last week but numbers were not so good but that is what i'm saying i knew numbers probably won't be good i knew that now what from here on what i personally feel a revival will come in the stock there for last five years data if i see their the pro their revenues have grown almost double from 7100 crores to 14870 crores their profits have gone up four times from 591 crores to 2162 crores face value is 10 eps is 65 pe ratio is 33 times when the industry average pe ratio is 35 times yes if you compare to nifty uh, average pe this looks a little high but chemical stocks do enjoy a little premium valuations based on the you know revenue uh, yeah, eps forecast of next two to three years return on equity uh, return on equity is sustaining above 20 percent which is actually beautiful which is very nice promoter is holding close to 50 percent uh, fii is holding close to 20 percent and dii is holding close to 14 percent which means almost 85 percent of the stocks are being held by fii dii and promoter taken together with public having just 15 percent what do i suggest i suggest a strong buy recommendation not expecting anything in short span of time okay not expecting anything in short span of time go for srf at 2170 with a target of 2300 plus go for srf at 2170 with a target of 2300 plus and if you can continue holding it, then I think you can also see levels of 2350 to 2400. But my first target is 2300 plus. Okay, what is the life hack for the day? See, I feel if you are born mediocre, it's a matter of fate. But if you are satisfied with mediocrity for the rest of your life, it's a matter of trait. So what I mean by this is that if you realize that, yes, I am born uh, from a very mediocre family, from I come from a very humble background, that is okay. But the question is, are you taking actions today to make sure that you come out of this mediocrity? We are not on this planet to be mediocres. We have to put in our best shot to make sure that we raise our standards. Now, if you, if you want to achieve that, one thing which you have to do is dream with your eyes wide open. Why I say to dream with your eyes wide open is because when you dream with your eyes wide open, that is when you know and you understand how to achieve those dreams. We are not talking about daydreaming. We want to be very clear about what we want in our life. You settling for mediocrity is an insult to God who has given and gifted you some special capabilities. You settling for mediocrity is an insult to your parents. It's an insult to your friends who have spent decades in anticipation that someday you will do something really extraordinary. So we are not settling for mediocrity. Find a purpose in your life. Till the time you don't find a purpose in your life, do not settle. Don't go for comfort. Your midnights, your mornings should not be normal till the time you find a purpose in life. Find a purpose in life and then go all guns blazing, chasing your dreams. That's exactly how you are supposed to live your life. We all have a purpose in life. You find your purpose and then start chasing it. And for all this, it is very important that you start, start you know, introspecting what exactly you want to do in life. You are not going to settle being a mediocre. You figure out what you want in your life and then start working towards it. Okay, you understood what I said. So mediocrity, okay, I am, but sir, I am happy with my mediocrity. I am not talking everything in terms of finances. I'm not talking about, uh, about your financial status. I'm talking about the quality of services you're offering. 
in the, your field whatever be your field you decide in your field you got to do your best i'm not asking you to compare yourself with anybody all i'm saying is whatever you want to do do that and make sure you are the best in that that's all i'm saying chalo i hope you like the video and uh, if you liked it leave a thumbs up leave some comments your comments encourage me a lot to make videos again and again i'm having back to back classes for last um, eight days now today is my ninth class just after wrapping up this video again i have to go for a full day class but i still try my level best to make videos because some of you are sending me personal messages that sir this time you don't stop because things are going very good and you have to continue doing it so i'm trying my level best to do it guys i'm trying my level best i just hope i can maintain this discipline because making these videos you know uh, collecting the data doing analysis then correlating this data into a logical sequence everything takes time and then we don't want to just come and speak some shit because we have a face value right so your comments do encourage me a lot share the video with as many people as possible only if you share people will get to know about my channel thank you bye bye god bless all of you stay bullish but stay cautious with your investments cheers guys happy weekend